All right, so I was going to do another quick little test here. Okay, I was doing a little mech. Uh, I'm just going to try to recreate that mech, that cube mech I did yesterday because I didn't record it. All right, so I'm just going to uh, place on a cube. And I'm just going to start working subtractively here. One thing I wish that they used was I was able to, uh, I need to like edit some of these shapes. I can't really, uh, I can't really import custom OBJs right now. So that's something I would like to use eventually. Oops. Also, one thing I really would like to see is um, better use of, um, better utilization of the, uh, the all the buttons. Cause right now, like if I want to go into subtraction mode, I have to actually go back over to the palette and click it. Be nice if there was just a toggle like like what um, medium has. Um, also, being able to go into the smooth would be nice too. Their smooth is okay. Um, I can sort of use it to blur out a little bit here and create these kind of smooth fillets. Did that one look at that? Actually, I think I just accidentally hit. Did I hit that one? Yeah, let's leave it. Um, this is kind of fun. Let me see if I can go ahead and subtract. Let's turn off the mirror for now. Subtract a big giant eyeball orbit. And one thing I was also fooling around with was the idea of how I'm going to edit this when I get it over into like ZBrush. So I was going to do an eyeball. But I'm going to do it so that it is not touching. That way it's easier for me to separate it as a polygroup inside ZBrush. So I kind of like put this eyeball kind of right there. Yeah, see I kind of touched that a little bit. Let's undo that. Replace that down. And then I kind of went through and uh, was erasing part of it with a cube. But this is where we need layers. I need to be able to turn off all the other layers to work on just this. So let's see if I go back in here and try cutting out a plane. One thing I would love to do too is I want to have the ability in any uh, VR sculpting app is once I place an object down like this, I'm using a cutter or an addition, I want to be able to scale it in three axes. Because right now I'm stuck to the cube. It would be nice to be able to slice it as a thin. What if I want to make like a thin uh, cube on Y and, and do an insert? That's really hard to do. I'd have to like kind of do something like this and kind of draw it across. And I want to be able to scale whatever object I have I'm using. That is something that I think would be important to have access to. Let's try just cutting out this. All right, so I cut that out. And then we're going to go ahead and just going to draw another eyeball, another sphere. This is, again, where layers would come in handy because I can keep this separated as a piece of geometry. But it's going to be fused in just with the nature of this. And let's try to into the center and we will click on that okay so i'm just trying to recreate what i did yesterday because i forgot to record it let's see um like right here i would love to do a shallow cylindrical cut but if i want to do it like this size i have to kind of draw it so they do have a draw feature here you can draw you can erase a line so you can kind of go in here and you click and you drag down, and you kind of get something like that. Actually, you know what? Let's um, make it a little bit bigger. Let's just center it up. Sorry about that. Let's uh, let's not do that. Let's go here. So a lot of people are asking me about, uh, hey, can you do hard surface in here? Well, you, technically, I mean, you're not really doing hard surface. I'm just using, um, I'm not doing this too much. I'm not sculpting with a tool because you see what you kind of get like it looks like toothpaste. What I'm trying to do is stamp it down once. Um, or like use something like this draw line 
And if you draw the line and then click off, it's like kind of a clean hit. And then we'll do another one here. Something like that to kind of keep it clean. Um, let's draw, let's start getting like the base for the pelvis here. So I'm just going to go ahead and, so I'd love to be able to taper that, have a, have this tapered, but that would be, that would require bringing in a, um, separate piece of geometry. I'm going to actually tilt a little bit. Let's see if I tilt it like that. And then yeah, it's not, see, it's not centered. Let's try that and then we'll make another one and what i was doing in zbrush was i was actually doing a cut a trim surface on this so let's do something like that and then we can go in here and let's play this one i'll, I'll use a cylinder we'll draw it out actually let's let's rotate it yeah if i rotate that i'm going to be off axis let's just try that we're gonna do an off axis on these legs here so i won't rely on symmetry let's see what that gives me Let's do it a little bit bigger. And you have to remember, you have to go through the center of the piece where you're cutting or drawing. Yeah, looks a little bit okay. Let's try it one more time. And we want to have them like at an angle, so we'll do like something like this. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to use the, you can see where it's intersecting. And so I kind of try to pull off Maybe being able to constrain that would be something in the future would be kind of fun to have is a constraint on that. Yeah, see, I'm kind of hit, I'm hitting that. This is where I want to be able to scale the cylinder in an axis because it would help with stuff like this. All right, that's good. Let's just go with that. Um, and. Let's um start taking this off axis a little bit. Something like this. Let's see, I'll start to mention I'm sitting down. I'm not standing up right now. Um but being able to just kind of crank this stuff out very fast i mean i could sure i could do this in zbrush probably in the same amount of time but i don't know there's something about being in vr and being able to use your arms your whole arm not be restricted to working on a 2d tablet or a 2d screen i have my cintiq um, i just enjoy this a lot more for right now so just banging out an idea here let's see if i um think this out I'm going to do something really quick here. I'm just going to try these joints. And what I'm going to do is see that you can see the bottom of the of this cube. If I start, if I draw something right here, see how it kind of gets cut off. I'm going to use that as a natural um, as a natural uh, boolean cut. So I'm going to say I'm going to use this for a uh, for the feet. I'll do something like that. Ending on that, do a smaller joint here. I'm gonna kind of go in here and do my little modeling here for the intake. Same thing up here. Like this, I was really fast. And then let's make this other leg. Let me see if I do it quick. Maybe like he's. Walking. Something like that. More perpendicular there. Okay. <clears throat> Whoop. Okay. 
Okay. And then this one, let's go ahead and just sculpt that out. So I will drag this one. I don't want to go drag too far, but let's... So I'm going to use a natural cut here. I'm going to do that. And then we're going to do, so I just like that little weird thing there. And then let's use the cube to make a flat portion. And let's just keep that right there. Let's keep it, we'll keep that cut for now. So yeah, if I had layers, I could actually move this in a little bit more. Um, they do have a select feature, which I've tried, but it's kind of awkward. So I say select, and I select this volume. Let's see if this will work. If I select that, and there's a cut and copy and paste. So I cut it, and then paste it. You can see how it's pasted here, the stamp. So I can kind of move it in a little bit closer. Something like that. So that's sort of a solution. Um, I just wish it was a little more intuitive, but that's not too bad. Let me go back and try smoothing this out now. Uh, we'll just kind of see if we can smooth it out a little bit. Here's other one cool, one little trick I was I was playing around with yesterday too, or the other day was to give some indication of connectors here. I would just go in and and just use a, I would uh, erase part of this. Like so, I'll do the same thing for the bottom here. And then drop in a line. So then I make the line a little thinner. So again, I'm just using this additive subtractive process. It's kind of cool. Let's do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to erase. Let's move that a little bit. And then we'll draw a line. Do this one. Yep, I was too far off. Let's send it up a little bit. There we go. Oh, let's um at this point. Let's uh, save before we move on. So hit save and we'll create a new one and orientate this and just hit the button. Let it think for a second and we're done. Okay, cool. Let's go back to sculpting. Um, for the arms, let's see, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Let's see, what did, did I have a shallow cutout yesterday for the... Maybe let's make a little... Uh, it's only like an area for the arms to come out. So I could go back in the mirror because I haven't changed this yet. This should be fine. And we'll go ahead and make some arms, some shoulders for this character. Let's put them in the back. Oops, draw. I don't remember to go back in the draw mode. We'll do something like that. And let's um, create a negative space for the joint to sit in. So here's what I'm thinking about if I was going to reposition um, this later. And actually, you know what? Let's let's do these. Let's uh, let's. Uh, so if I would do an off axis and draw it, and I could reposition them. So let's think about that. So if I take this guy over here and just do that, I'm going to make one set of arms, and then I'll. Um, I'll try the selection to cut him. So I want to reposition him so like he's walking. So we'll do this guy. We'll do uh, draw a line. Start in the center. 
one out. Now I'm going to cut that in half too, so I want it to be a little bit thick. Same thing with this. This joint come down a little bit. I'll start further in. Yeah. Yo, I keep on pulling it too tight. Let's see, let's try this one. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. I'm going to cut this, cut this, and then let's do another joint. The hand. All right. And I was doing these cool little... Uh, Just really simple, oops, really simple um, claw claws for this one. Something like that. I'm gonna cut out the hole. Actually, let's do the draw line again. Let's give it some definition. See right here, I can't cut that one because I'm going to bump into that. I'm going to make a thinner slice. Yeah, let's just work with that for now. All right, so now let's try this. Let's go into selection. And we're going to turn off mirror. I'm going to select this. All right. Now, see that? Okay, you need to be able to you know, select the whole thing at once, I guess. You can't, like, shift select. There we go. Okay, it's selected. And that's... Uh, can I copy or paste? I have to cut it first and then paste it. Okay, now we're going to move around. Uh, ah, this is a little bit awkward. I can't, yeah, I can't use the thumb controller to reorient it. So I'm going to move it something like this. We'll put it in over here. And I'm just going to do that because I'm going to reposition it probably in ZBrush. All right. Actually, you know what I could do is I could flip it and do it over here. But I have to delete. I have to delete that one first. So I don't know how to do that. Let's uh, let's select this one. I haven't used this that much, this uh, selecting feature here. So we'll do that. And we'll, I just want to, I guess I'll, if I cut it, yeah, I don't want to paste, and I'll just paste it again. And then we'll just do this. That's still, okay, that's not touching anything. And for instance, let's uh, select just this hand and we're going to reposition the hand. So watch this. So I go in here. Grab up to like say there where that connector's at, and we'll say cut. And now I got this cool, so that's kind of a cool feature. So we'll go ahead and um, I, oh, I can scale that. That's interesting. I just noticed that. So you can actually scale it with a button. Uh, I'm sorry, with a thumb controller. So let's do that. We're gonna make this hand a little bit bigger, and we'll uh, try to pose it really quick here. that down that's cool let's do the same thing with the other one so let's select let's, let's uh position that one because it doesn't look right take this up to there we'll cut 
Oh, looks like there's some residue there. It's fine. We'll just leave it. And I'm actually on the. This is where I need to. We need to be able to rotate this because, like, right now I'm stuck with this orientation. So I'm trying to move around here and let's see. We want to. I kind of want the arm to go that way, but if I paste it, it's going to go through the, it's going to go through that. Yeah, let's do it this way for now. I want it to be more posed. All right, that's fine. Kind of cool. I might want to take this whole body and rotate it forward, but I'll probably do it in the ZBrush. All right, let's just erase that little garbage right there. All right, so this is looking pretty cool. Let's uh, just click down dirty. Let me um, let's uh, fix these guys up here. And then we'll drop in our cylinder. See, this is where it would be great to do layers because I could give these separate uh, materials um, when I bring it into ZBrush, cover polygroups, and then go through and uh, assign those different colors when I bring them into Keyshot. But this is pretty fast. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could do this in ZBrush pretty fast too, but it's just something about being in the VR space and being able to like move it around really fast. I'll tell you, man, it's, it's pretty liberating. I got some little smush there. Let's get rid of that little smush. Okay. And it's like, yeah, I mean, just picking the model and like moving it around is awesome. So look at how fast I'm doing that. Um, Let's see, so he's running. Do we want it? What else did I have on that other model? I'm trying to remember. I had little antennas. So let's see if I put. Uh, let me try a little cone. And I'll chop off the cone part. I could do something like this. Oh, sorry, I was on the wrong thing. I always forget that I'm in the wrong mode sometimes. Something like that. And we'll erase the bottom. Um, let's see. We'll do a draw a little line, a little cylinder. Oops. Yeah, so I'm already hitting the hitting the limit there. Let's see, let's draw. You gotta be careful if you have, sometimes if you have the, the. I wish I could I could turn this off or dock this because sometimes it gets in the way. Um, let's see if I can go back and draw this. Not a draw line, we'll draw a very thin one. Let's, let's cap that with a little thick, thicker cylinder on top. Just like that. Hold on here. I'll try something thinner.
I like that curve in the back. Um, oh, he had some rockets in the back too. He had uh, he had something. Maybe I'll change that. Maybe we'll do a um, we'll do a. Oops, we'll do. What do I want to do here? Do I want to draw a little? And what I do is I slice that. So what I'll do is I'll put something like this in. So I'm gonna, I don't want to do a taper there. I can't scale this cone enough to get the. Almost like erase that. Erase the cylinder, a little tiny one. Oh, keep on hitting. So I'm just trying to hit it once. This one's gotta have some. I gotta put some rivets on. Do a couple of little rivets. It's probably gonna affect my topology though, but. This is probably where I would. These rivets I probably should do post. Put rivets in, in like ZBrush or something. Because I want this to be a nice, clean topo. I'm just gonna use zero mesher for that. Let's see what else should I do on this guy before we try to bring it over. Let's see, maybe if I wanna add just a couple little details here. Let's just um see so this is where I want to just put down a stamp. And keep it clean. And we'll see how this holds up when I when I uh, be topo. And I'll show you guys a little trick too when I um bring this in the ZBrush because this looks okay here at the scale, but when you when you zoom in, it's gonna be pretty pretty choppy. So um, let's go ahead and save. I'm just going to keep on iterating, iteratively changing it because I can't remember if it overwrites. So I'm just going to save another one. Okay, we got that. Um, Oh, let me add some of the uh, joints here. I need to have the little cut out. Oops. I hope this is all recording. I kind of lost track of time. I need to get a timer next time I do this.
Like if I want to add some little detail right there, I want to be able to take this cylinder and scale it down in the in the y axis and just add a little rim right right there. But I can't do that. Otherwise, I would have done a layer, make a layer, chopped it off, and then merged it down. So layer support is sorely needed. That's like a big thing. You gotta have you gotta have layer support. Sorry. Let's see if I do this. I'm trying to try to get some dimension here. See, I'm going to cut into that arm. Damn it. Yeah. If I'm liking that or not. Um, let's say one more time. Yeah, he's top heavy, but it's fine. He's got these like thin little legs. I could put in, give him some bulky. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, let's change it up a little bit. Let's just try just goof around. Why not? Give him a notion of a calf. There you go. Let's get a little more balance. It's more visual detail. Yeah, I tend to do it. I do tend to use a lot of very simplified forms in my stuff. So it's like building up the illusion of complexity with with shapes, which I like to do a lot. I almost want to, yeah. I almost want to kind of just give a little bit of an indication of. Let's see, is that gonna? Yeah, see, I don't like. I like using the line feature because I get a clean cut. Now let's not do that. Let's just leave those hands like there for now. I got a little bit of a chip there, but. Yeah, let's leave it. All right, so that's kind of fun. Let's call that done for now, and we'll bring it over to ZBrush.